This week, Sarah found a great design for a cool fairy tale bed, so we had to make one for her baby. Yep, and we get to meet Nils and Katrina from Learn to DIY. Plus, we'll share a few of our favorite maker videos of the week. But first, it's time for a maker break. Hey guys, I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah. And this week, my baby girl turned into a toddler at some point along the way. And we wanted to make her a real bed. Yeah, but this little girl deserves something a bit more magical. Now, when Sarah showed me the design for this simple bed, I was pretty pumped. Her daughter is this amazing little girl, and I knew this would make her happy. To build it, we just needed some 2 by 4s And I was able to get what I needed from our current supply, which is always nice. First thing I needed to do was to get them cut down to size. Now the four stretchers were easy enough, but the end frames shaped like a house required some fancy miters. First I needed to make some 22.5 degree cuts in the side and top pieces. This would get me to 45 degree angles for the roof pitch, which yeah, it's a bit steep, I know, but this is not a real house, so calm down. Now I'm guilty of the same thing a lot of you are. I haven't spent the time to really dial in my miter saw, so these cuts were just slightly off. Normally not an issue, but in this design I really needed all those cuts to be precise because they all needed to add up, but we'll get to that in a minute. Soon I had all my pieces ready and got to sanding. I know Sarah's daughter will be touching these services, so I had to make sure they were super smooth. Sanding took forever, but it's necessary. Next my wife helped me apply a couple coats of water-based poly with some light sanding in between. Then it was time to screw them all together. I used pocket hole screws and was careful to put them where you're not likely to see them. This brings me back to our angle problem. My 45 degree cuts were pretty good, but my 22.5 were just off, and that meant the parts didn't line up. But with a few adjustment cuts to the top pieces, I was able to get it all fixed. Then it was time to head over to Sarah's house, so I packed up everything I need and drove over. Once we got into her daughter's room, all we had to do was screw in the stretchers, and we were done. Sarah added a few extras like these LED lights and it was time to show it to her daughter. And I think it's safe to say she liked it. All right, so she did like it, right? Okay, so we can't keep her off of it unless we tell her it's time to go to bed or nap time and then she avoids it like the play. That kind of makes <laughs> sense because that's pretty much how kids work. All right, guys, we share the maker universe with a ton of amazing content creators. And every week we reach out to interview a new one. This week we're talking with Nils and Katrina from Learn to DIY. It's time again to meet a maker. So my name is Nils. I'm Katrina. And we have a couple of channels. Our bigger channel is called Learn to DIY. And in that channel we cover all things home improvement, a little work around the yard, some work on our cars really any project that we want to do around the house or that we think our viewers might want to do as well. And a lot of it is us kind of fumbling our way through it and figuring things out. Uh, a lot of times we'll try something a few times and then show it on camera and hopefully inspire others to try it themselves as well. We also have a 3D printing zone channel where it's all things 3D printing. So if you need to get your nerd on, check it out. Got that too. So what tool is the most unsung hero of the shop? Uh, for me, I'm gonna have to go with the wireless brad nailer. So we use a brad nailer for so many of our projects, whether it's a woodworking project, but especially for projects around the house. It's great if you wanna glue something and then just tack a couple of brads in there to hold it in place while it dries. Um, but for years, we've used a air compressor, a hose, and a cheap $20 Harbor Freight brad nailer. We finally took the plunge when doing the shiplap video, right? Yeah. Um, and we decided to go ahead and purchase a wireless, or a cord, sorry, not wireless, a cordless brad nailer. And that thing is awesome. We use it all the time. Uh, pop a battery in there and you're good to go. I love it. So my all-time favorite project would probably be, probably be our uh, kitchen table. Uh, we wanted to have a nicer, bigger kitchen table for our family and uh, couldn't stand the thought of paying thousands of dollars for one. So um, now we have one for, I don't know, under $400 or something that was made in our garage and um, it'll be in the family for a long time, hopefully. That's a cool one. Um, I had a lot of fun with that one too. It took uh, several months, but it was well worth it, I think. Uh, for me, I think my favorite project was I 3D printed a full body-sized wearable Stormtrooper armor suit and then worked with a friend to actually make it bulletproof. 
and so we took it and shot it and everything so it was a 3d printed bulletproof stormtrooper uh, armor suit which was pretty pretty awesome i thought um, had a lot of fun shooting it had a lot of fun making it and learned a ton along the way nerd guilty so for that question, I'm going to have to go with uh, Jameson over at Rogue Engineer. If you haven't seen their channel, um, it's a husband-wife uh, duo that does all kinds of really cool projects. I mean, they're working on, they built their dream home, they do these little projects for inside outdoors. Um, they do a lot of the similar kind of stuff that, to what we do, but I love the, the way they film things, the way they explain things. Uh, Jameson is obviously a really sharp guy. Um, his wife helps out with all the projects. They do a really cool job at collaborating on things. And they have just a lot of really neat stuff on their channel. So if you haven't seen their channel before, go ahead and check them out. Very cool stuff. So currently we're working on um, getting permanent Christmas lights on our house because putting Christmas lights up is terrible. So we've been um, trying to work out a, a, a way to get those up and on the house forever so we never have to deal with it again. That's really exciting. Yep. So a lot of work uh, going into research at this point for that one. Uh, another few things we've been doing lately is a whole slew of projects on our vehicles. Uh, everything from window tinting to rock ship repair to uh, painting different parts and even painting entire vehicles. Uh, we've just been trying to figure out what works for us and DIY as much of that as we can to see how it works out. So yeah, in between all of our videos we like to post on social media little updates about what we're working on. A lot of times we'll put some of the uh, areas that didn't go so well or some challenges that we're running up against and we put those on social media on Facebook and Instagram on our Learn to DIY accounts. So feel free to check those out as well as subscribing to our Learn to DIY and the 3D Printing Zone channels. Thanks so much for having us. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye, see ya. Thank you so much guys, we appreciate it. If you guys are not yet subscribed to their YouTube channel, you can find it at Learn to DIY on YouTube and Instagram. Moving on to a few of our favorite maker videos this week. AYD or A Design Co, I'm not sure which one, they shared this great build of a rustic modern log bench. The build process was a ton of fun to watch, right up until he spray painted the top of it. <laughs> but it turns out it was just actually bringing out the grain. The whole thing turned out amazing. Just go watch it. Are you okay? It was really scary at first. It's fine. <laughs> Next up, Joe from Dirty Bay Workshop told me I had to see a new desk build from Spensley Design Company. And I'm glad he did because the desk is really cool. Eric was struggling to find a comfortable place to work at home and decided to make a workspace from plywood. These days, a lot of us are stuck working from home and a desk like this would make a huge difference. Fortunately, he provides detailed plans for just eight bucks. And our last video is from a friend Haley at Honest Work Designs. She needed some outdoor entertaining space and came up with this amazing lounging piece unlike anything I've seen before. I love how big it is and the fact that you can move the seat backs is just awesome. The best part is that she built it with just two by fours, making it really easy enough for the rest of us to make it ourselves. I'm going to steal her doggo. What is wrong with it's you? Adorable dog. All right, maker friends, that's all we've got this week. If you saw a maker video that should have been mentioned, do us a favor and link to it in the comments below. If you link it, we will watch it. We sure will. And special thanks to Heart for sponsoring this episode and reminding us that we can build anything we can imagine if we do it with Heart. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. All right, break's over. Let's go make something.